Okay, brothers, we want to talk about humility. And as Matt shared from weakness, I will share from a point of strength. Amen. We're going to learn what humility is or what it isn't. Uh, but first, I want to start you out with a little something to get your, get your hearts pumping and set our minds. I want you to try to, to chase this little chicken. Well, what do I got to chase a chicken for? It's embarrassing. You know? First, because I said so. And second, because chicken chasing is how we always used to train in the old days. Yeah. You catch this thing, you can catch grease lightning. Ready? Yeah, well, I'd rather read it than chase it. Ain't very mature, That's brother. How'd you say? Well, neither are you very mature. <laughs> now listen, get this thing. It's a fire, it's a Come on, honey. Go on and get it. Get it, get it, get it. Come on, what's the matter with you? Get it. Pick him up. Pick him up. Pick him up. Put him down. <laughs> what's the matter with you so fast? Well, you're standing still with some big feet. Can't you catch your little chicken? Huh? Uh, move your tail. Move your tail. You look like a girl out there. What's the matter with you? I feel like a Kentucky Fried Idiot. humility um, because as Christians we are called to be humble the entire recently saw the movie Creed which was spectacular I recommend it I uh, saw it twice saw it once with the brothers and I had to take my wife again great day night my wife again you marry wisely my wife loved Creed and uh, got to see it but you know the entire Rocky series you know what the entire theme of the movie is humility it's all about humility. In the movie Creed, uh, anyway, I won't give it away, but there's a, a young fighter who goes to Rocky uh, to get some help, and Rocky gets him out there with the chicken. And he's chasing the chicken around. There's another scene where uh, he's trying to be a fighter, but he takes him to someone else, and the fighter's like, look, I came to you for help. And Rocky said, there's some things I can't help you with, but these guys can help you. I'm training you by watching you train with them. And the whole idea there, the whole bit of every movie is humility. And where pride comes, uh, then comes defeat every single time. And each time it's a battle of Rocky overcoming his, uh, his pride, uh, different men, men in his life working, training him. At one point after he got beat down by, uh, what was it, Clubber Lang, he had to go out to L.A. to get trained by Apollo. Uh, and, then he, uh, and then he had to learn how to speed. He had to fight differently to fight a different type of fighter. And for us, brothers, we have got to have a deep conviction about being humble. Turn with me over to Colossians chapter 3. Colossians 3. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 12. Paul, writing to the church at Colossus, giving them some direction. And he says in verse 12, he says, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. And he says, you know, we've got to clothe ourselves. Previously, he says, you've got to take off this old stuff, this malice and all these other things. But here he says, you've got to clothe yourselves with compassion. And he says, we've got to put on humility. We've got to clothe ourselves with it. And as Christians, uh, for those of us that are disciples here, the reason we are able to become Christians is because of humility. We didn't, we didn't get in the waters of baptism without being able to say, Jesus is Lord of my life. And I share this all the time, how we got there. And I know for myself as a 19-year-old, incredibly prideful young man, uh, I got there by, one, uh, realizing I need help. And so I called someone and asked him, what do I need to read in the Bible? And so he told me to read the book of John, as Matt shared by he read. I read through the entire Gospel of John in one day. I went to church the next week. They asked me to study the Bible. I said, okay, I'll study the Bible. I ain't going to your house because I ain't never gone to a bunch of dudes' house to sit around and study the Bible, uh, but I'll meet you at a restaurant. So we, we studied the Bible. Uh, they, told, they told me different things about my life from the scriptures. 
I was able, I humbled out, prayed, even the time I ran away after we studied about sin and I realized how sinful I was and I had a bunch of worldly sorrow, came to my house, came and got me, went out and prayed. My heart was able, got, by God's grace, was able to get broken and was able to go ahead and finish and say, Jesus is Lord and get baptized. Your process is very similar. You have people tell you from the scriptures, man, you're, you're, you need some help in this area. You've got to repent of your pride, your selfishness, your purity. Here's what the Bible says. You're not going to make it if you don't forgive. If you don't forgive, God won't forgive you. You've got to overcome this laziness in your character. So we submit to this training. We submit to other men. A lot of men we don't generally know very well. We, we look in the Bible. We submit to them. We submit to God. And guess what? God grants us salvation. We're totally renewed. We're different people, different mindsets, different actions. We've got strengths now, all these different things. But something happens over time, and I'm addressing mainly some of our older Christians. And our theme, obviously, this year is shine. And it's not about us shining, really. It's about God shining through us and God helping us to be our best by seeking God. God helping us to be our best so that people can see God through us. And they might be drawn to this light, to his light in a very dark world. But what happens over time for a lot of us is we have that humility, we're learning, we're growing, but then it starts to slow down. And we're no longer growing at the pace that we were originally. Our characters aren't changing in the manner that they were. We actually overcome some of the outward sin. For me, cussing, not a big deal. You know, became, I cussed all the time before I was Christian, studied the Bible. Man, I don't cuss anymore. I'm hanging around with Christians. Even when I hung around with my parents, grandparents, whatever, I never cussed. So I was like, that's easy. The immorality, okay, that was easy. Didn't put myself in those situations. You know, the temptations, the purity, a little bit more of a challenge. But the more I learned to confess, all the outward stuff, I wasn't walking around campus like, uh, uh, you know what I mean? Getting neck exercises with every woman that passed by. God helped me, overcame that. Boom, I'm growing. And, you know, the drunkenness, all that stuff, those things, honestly, are the easiest things to overcome. As a disciple, those are some of the easy things, the challenging things, the selfishness, the pride, self-reliance, which is pride, insecurity, which is the flip side of arrogance. Those things, those are the hard things. You know, and then you find something, you know, you get inspired, you know, if you're a leader, man, I really want to grow, i got to learn how to lead. So you learn some things, then after a while, you get comfortable in things you learn, and then you, your growth curve, you slow down again. When you're married, and you're doing premarital counseling, you're learning, man, how, do I, how can I be a great boyfriend? How can I be a great husband? You know, how can I be a great dad? And then that learning curve slows down again. And what happens, brothers, is we begin to get comfortable, and we lose the whole idea of what it means to be a disciple of Jesus, and when we share being a disciple, it means of Jesus. Amen? Uh, not of one another. Uh, we're disciples of Jesus. What happens is we slow down and we stop learning. And then all of a sudden, man, th life gets very hard. You're like, man, it's supposed to be easy. I'm a Christian. It gets more challenging the more prideful you are. It gets more challenging with the less you ask for help. Let's see what God has to say about this. Turn with me over to Psalm chapter 25. Psalm chapter 25, verse 8. Psalm 25, verse 8. We're going to do a little tour through the scriptures, Psalm and Proverbs. Psalm 25, verse 8. The Bible says, Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he instructs sinners in his ways. He guides the humble in what is right and teaches them his way. And here it says, the Bible says, God says, He guides the humble in what is right. And to be guided by God, you gotta, you actually have to let him guide you. Even as Matt shared, he let Solomon go his own way. For some of us, we're like, well, nothing catastrophic has happened. I've been doing this, and God hasn't necessarily let anything catastrophic happen. Well, brothers, you read in Romans, it says that God's patience, uh, it's supposed to lead us to repentance. For some of us, he's just storing up wrath. And it, it's like this. It's like, you know, the bow and arrow. For some of you who are a hunter, I know Jason's a hunter. Uh, you know, if you've ever gone out with a bow and arrow, it's, you know, the further you pull it back, the more force that arrow's going to land with. 
And so over time, we keep going our own way. We're independent. We're prideful. We're doing whatever. We're not, we're not seeking or obeying God. And so that arrow gets pulled back further and farther. Over here, we're like, oh, man, God, is, God loves me. You see it with the rich all the time in the world. Oh, God's blessing me. Look at my life. But what's happening is God, in his blessing, he's trying to get us to repent. But he's pulling that arrow back further and further and further. And there's going to come a point in time, brothers, when he lets go. And when he lets go, boom, it's devastation. Pride comes before a fall. Amen? But he says he crowns, he crowns, uh, he gives, he guides the humble in his way. Turn with me over to Psalm 149, verse 4. I kind of ahead of myself. Psalm 149. Psalm 149, 149, verse 4. This is encouraging. It says, For the Lord takes the light in his people. He crowns the humble with salvation. He crowns the humble with salvation. I like that visual of God, you know, bringing you on up. And putting that crown on you. Not like the Miss Universe. Not like he puts it on you. It's like, oh, I'm sorry. I made a mistake. No, no. He actually puts it on there for good. Amen. We can all be Filipino. Amen. And have the crown. We can all have the crown. But he crowns the humble. So what does that mean for the proud, though? There's no crown there. There's no honor. There's no true victory there. Turn with me to Proverbs chapter 11. Proverbs chapter 11. Verse 2. When pride comes, then comes disgrace. But with humility comes wisdom. With humility comes wisdom. Brothers, all of us are prideful on one level or another. Can I get an amen on that? Can I get? Can you raise your hands if you're prideful? Please, I'm going to help you out. If you don't raise, Rich, raise that hand. Please, thank you. Good. Raise that hand up. And depending on your cultural bent, you can be a lot more prideful. Amen. For my Liberian brothers. Or brother, or rather, JB. Amen. But all of us, have, we've got this, we've got a sense of pride within us. And in our lives, before we're Christians, man, we're disgraced. Our sin is our disgrace. And it's not until we get humble and we start obeying God, listening, seeking Him out, and seeking out the input of our brothers, that's when we, become, we begin to come, become wise. And we start like, wow, I don't put myself in situations anymore. So guess what, man, my purity's gotten exponentially better because I'm not sitting around late night, you know, 1 o'clock in the morning, tooling around the Internet. It's amazing how your purity strengthens when you're not in those situations. You know what I mean? Uh, when you're sharing your faith at the gym uh, because some girl smiles at you, it's amazing how, you know, that temptation to just want to flirt goes away. You start sharing your faith, guess what? They stop smiling as much. It's just, it's just funny how that works. Uh, humility comes with them. Proverbs 8, 15. The fear of the Lord, verse 33, the fear of the Lord teaches a man wisdom. And humility comes before honor. You want to shine, get humble. Proverbs 18, 12. It says, before his downfall, a man's heart is proud. But humility comes before honor. I just handpicked a few of these. We can literally go through Proverbs and Psalms. We can shoot on over to James chapter 4, where it says, you know, God opposes the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Uh, you know, 1 Peter 5, where he says, you know, he basically says the same thing. He says, in due time, God will lift you up. God exalts the humble, but he humbles the proud. And brothers, the, the thing that I want to challenge us on, and honestly, this is mainly for the older Christians. If you've been a Christian 2, 3, 5, 15, 20 years, I'm talking to you. We tend to be the most prideful brothers in the church. 
And it's, it's honestly, it's ridiculous. It should actually go the opposite way. The longer we're Christians, and if we're maturing in Christ, we should be the most humble. We should be seeking out the most input. Uh, you know, it's easy when you're first doing something to get input and you get comfortable, you get lazy. Uh, the athletes and people that we admire the most in the world are honestly some of the most humble. And you think about that, you're like, well, Tiger Woods, he's not a humble man. In all honesty, the amount of trainers and uh, swing coaches and all those kind of things, it takes humility, nutritionists, to do what they say. Those guys aren't just out there on their own and on their own talents. You know, you look at Steph Curry, the best basketball player in the world, uh, you know, just according to Eric. I'm just saying, you know, you look at him, and it's just it, it, he's trained his whole life. He's still training. He's gotten better this year than last to absolutely make him the best player in the universe. But anyway, um, but he's getting trained. So, brothers, i got to ask you the question. Are you, there's some questions that we need to ask no matter what stage in life we're at. If you're a teen, you gotta ask her, you gotta be asking the questions, man, how can I navigate at my high school? How can I now it's so sinful. There are women trying to get with me because now, and it, I've seen it happen all the time, you become a Christian as a teen, you're kind of dopey, then all of a sudden you become a Christian, you learn some confidence, you kind of get your, you know, you learn how to talk and look people in the eye and smile, and all of a sudden the women are liking that. And you're, you're like, whoa, they're attracted to me. They're actually not, they're attracted to Jesus in you. Same thing with Ken. And so you've got to ask the question, how can I navigate this? It's hard. How can I share my faith? Because I, I'm so scared. You've got to ask input and get help. If you're a campus student, you've got to ask questions. Man, how do I navigate this? How do I orchestrate my schedule? How do I manage my time? How can I be the most effective that I can be on the campus? As a single man, the same thing. How do I manage everything? You know, how do I manage my money? How, do I, how can I be effective? How can I be fruitful? How can I help other people become Christian? I got this going on. My schedule. You got to ask questions. You got to get help. For a married men with no kids, you got to ask yourself, man, how can I be my best for my wife? How can I set an example for her? How can I best help us to be fruitful together? Because we're not just here so we can now have sex, right? That's not why you get married. It's, man, how can we help each other get to heaven? How can I help her be her best? You got to get help for that. You got kids. Man, how do I manage all these doggone kids? And my wife. And my job. How do I do all that and read my Bible and pray and share my... How do I do that? I need help. How do I orchestrate our finances? I need help. If you're married with no kid or you're retired, how can I manage my time? How can I just not waste away and wait for the grave? How can I serve? What can I do? And these are questions we've got to ask. We have hit, I know it's real big right now, we have hit the lottery in the church. And what I mean by that, and I feel that way, as a Christian, I've hit the lottery. If there's anything I need help with in my life right now, there are brothers in here who can help me. There are brothers in here who can teach me. There are brothers here who can guide me. Brothers who can hold me accountable. And guess what? People look at me and they're like, wow, bro. Man, you've grown so much. You're so this or that. And I'm like, honestly, I just learned, you know, from Mark Clark. Uh, I learned from Harry. I learned from, you know, the brothers around in my life that God has put in my life. Man, I'm watching uh, Siobhan. I'm watching, you know, Rob. I'm watching all these different brothers. I'm learning. You know, Joe is helping me, training me, helping me ministry-wise to think on different levels. It's like, man, God, I've hit the lottery. I've got everything I need. And guess what? I still got prayer, the most important part. I still got... You know, my Bible, the absolute most important part. And so now I got everything I need. There's no reason I should not be growing. The only reason I'm not is because I'm not humble. I don't have a desperate need to grow in my relationship with God. I don't have a desperate need. I, I, I don't see my own deficiencies. You guys with me? And brothers, if we're going to grow... If we're going to be what God calls us to be, if we're going to shine for Christ, to be that light on a hill, as Jesus talked about in Matthew, we got to be humble. And God always blesses humility. Amen? Amen. Amen. We're going to have a prayer real quick, and then I'm going to give some instruction on our next part. Let's have Harry come on up and pray for us.
Amen. Father God, it is awesome to be here today with the men, being able to pray to you, being able to just seek you, Father, being able to seek change in our life, transformation in our life, Father. We do pray as we're hearing about you, Father, help us with humility. We all know that we all need help in that area in our lives, Father. No matter how humble we may think we are, we know that we can always grow more, Father. Help us to emulate Jesus, Father, as he walked to this world, Father, as you came into this world, experienced your, what your creation did, and you walked with humility, Father. People talked about you. People tortured you. People spit on you, Father. And think about the little slightest things we do. Maybe somebody looks at us in the wrong way and we get a bad attitude. Help us, Father, to just grow in our hearts to really see what is in this world, Father. We were part of it. We're still in it there, but you ask us to be more, Father. You ask us to engage in it. You ask us to represent you in it, Father. That can't happen without humility, Father. Help us to know that there are brothers around us, Father, helping us, encouraging us, spurring us on, Father. Help us to know that you never fail. You said never will you leave us, never will you forsake us, Father. Only our, humili only our humility will keep that door open. Our pride will shut it and forsake us. Help us to know that you are that light and you will never leave us. You are the same yesterday, you are the same tomorrow, and you will be the same tomorrow. You will be the same tomorrow as well. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. amen.